Hey guys, Yusuf Jones chiming in. Just uh, sitting here in my hotel, thinking about things that have happened throughout my life, thinking of why I'm here, what my purpose is, my passion. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to be right back. Hold that thought. Right back. All right, <clears throat> here we go. And this is probably one of the realest videos that I've ever done. And, uh, you know, as we go through life, so many things happen. So many things will come across our path that keep us away from who we really are. So many things that keep us away from really prospering in life. And I've been on this earth long enough now to know that so many people walk away from their dreams. So many people walk away from everything that God has in store for them because things happen in life. And I want to just share a little bit about my story also, and hopefully I can be a blessing. I know I am a blessing and inspiration to other people who are going through some things in life. Now, you can sit there and you can look at celebrities on TV and you can quote all the scriptures in the world that you want and you can say <clears throat> what your why is and you can do all of the things that you've been taught and programmed to do. But what I want to do is give you my perspective on this. Hey there, Elenico, how are you? Um, thank you for that. Peace and grace, peace and power. I want to give my perspective in life because, and, and I kind of want to share my perspective from who I am, like, like it's from the skin I'm in, as a black man that has seen every possible thing that could go wrong in life, every possible thing that I used to think was designed to stop me, that I used to think was designed to take me out, that I used to think was designed to just hinder me in life. And a lot of us don't understand like, our true purpose. A lot of us don't understand like our real why. It's so easy to sit down and go to some type of personal development class or seminar and just holler and quote and scream what every single one else is, is screaming. But I wanna just talk some real talk. Good morning, good afternoon, Jennifer, glad to see you. I just wanna have like some real talk because I feel that we need each other so much in this world. And I know in watching people that I coach, people that are friends, people that I'm watching from a distance, people that I know your heart, I know your vision, I know what it is that you want to do. People who have been locked up, sent to jail, went to jail, back and forth, sold drugs, in the streets, doesn't matter. I watch you. I know you. And my question is, like, what is this why really about? Because I see so many people who are literally, when I say not three feet from gold, not two feet from gold, I'm talking fourth and sixth in the Super Bowl of life. And they give up. They won't go for the six points. They go for the three points or they go for the easiest way out in life. And that's not what winners do. That is not what winners do. That's not what creators do. That's not what people who were put on this earth and designed to have dominion over the earth. When you have dominion over the earth, that means you have dominion over your problems too. And there's no problems too big to make you quit on your dream. Please share this with your friends. It's the realest thing I've ever said. I've been sitting here and there's something that's on my mind right now based off of something that I've heard today. And I just want to bless that person and I want to bless anybody who's in the sound of my voice. I want to let you know that there are going to be many bumps in the road. There's going to be many times where, listen guys, when you go out to the beach, you can get up on your little surfboard and you can ride the wave or 
you have the same ability, same, same opportunity to crash, to be wiped out. But the wipeout or the crash or the, 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 the failure or the losing or the quitting or the walking away, God damn, I get so tired of seeing our people quit, not three feet from goal, not two feet from goal, but I'm talking, I'm talking about like where are the people with that, those, those New England Patriots mindset? Where are those guys at? Where are the guys that when it looks like everything is going against them, they just get down and they huddle up and they come together and they like hut one, hut two, they don't care what the score says, they don't care what the odds are. Where are those people at? Where are those people at? <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you where they're at. They're at their day job. They're at their night job. Because something is telling them, <laughs> some piece of adversity is telling them that they're not capable. They don't have what it takes to get through this fire. And I want you to know that when all things break loose in your life, when all it seems like just all hell is breaking loose around you, that you must know this. You must know that you are that far away from your calling. You must know that you're that far away from your breakthrough. You must know that all of your dreams and your prayers are about to be answered, but you've put out something to the universe. You've put something out to God asking for something that was greater than anything that you could see, greater than anything that you've ever thought. But you didn't know there was gonna be a test. See, you wasn't expecting the test. You wasn't prepared for that. You just thought that the dream and the gift is going to be dropped in your lap and you're going to take it and walk home with it. It's never been the case. Never been the case. <sighs> Listen, if you want to be that black lion, and I'm not talking about black as in color, I'm talking about this mythical animal that people think it's like, or, or that Kai, Kaiser Sose where you heard about it, but you've never seen about it. you never, you never seen it. If you really, truly want to get across that bridge and leave all of the sadness and leave all of the disappointment and leave all of the misunderstandings and leave all the bad relationships, the bad relationships with mother, with daddy, with husband, with wife, with ex-girlfriend, with child, if you truly want to get to that point, you cannot quit. You cannot quit on your life. You cannot quit on your dream. You can't make excuses up to justify that you're about to walk away on your dream, on what you say you want. Listen, you can look at Steve Harvey all day long and talk about jumping and all this stuff, but what do you really do when you're in the trenches? When it's just you, mano y mano with the man and the woman in, in the mirror. When it's mano y mano with the woman in the mirror, what are you gonna do then? What, you see, you would sit back and we tell our kids all these good things and you tell her, don't quit. You say, you know, no matter what happens, get back up and try it again. But it's you, it's you who they're looking at. And what do they say when you quit on your dreams? What do you say to them then? What do you say? Well, daddy quit. What do you say? Well, mommy quit. And they're watching you and they're like, wow, you got to understand what's going on. And you got to understand, like, what is your why? Really? Why are you doing this? And why are you expecting to go through life without any type of turmoil? Why are you expecting that? Because you have to go through that. Your manufacturer set it up for you like that because it's a part of the test. It is a part of the test. And if you can't pass this test that may seem like it's taking, it's sucking all your strength out of you. It may seem like it's just zapping every bit of power. This is why it's so important to be around the right people. It's so important to have the, be around the right energy because at the end of the day, man, anybody can quit. Let me tell you something. When you quit on life, when you quit on yourself, you're quitting on God. You're quitting on the God inside of you that's designed you to be a winner. You're creating on the universe that has moved things out of your life just to get you to this point right now today. And you don't get it. We don't get it as people. We don't get that. You cannot have the rainbow without the rain. It must come, so you must welcome it. You must look at it and you must say, wow, okay, this opportunity, this, this perceived failure just came up and whether it's a relationship, whether it's a lost job, whether you, no matter what it is, <clears throat> you got to understand that this is the ultimate test. You got to understand that the gate is right there. The end zone is right there. 
And you have to look around yourself and you have to say, well, am I the Atlanta Falcons or am I the, the New England Patriots? Who's leading this? Who are you? Are you Tom Brady? Or are you Joe Rockhead? Like, come on, guys. You don't quit on yourself. What is your why? The easiest thing in the world is to quit. The easiest thing in the world is to gather a bunch of information and be this educated derelict that has the information to change your life, but you won't go through with it because you were hurt, you're mad, you're, you're offended, you, you, you quit, you can't see no way out, and a little bit of tough times came through your way. What I want you to know is this. I want you to know that every single problem that comes into your life, it must come in your life, is designed to build you. It's not designed for you to walk away. And if you're just like a level one person, that means you don't really know who you are in this world. You don't know what your passion is. You don't know what your assignment is. You don't know what your purpose is. These problems, which are level two problems, guys, they're level two problems, level three at worst. Level three at worst. And if you understand that this problem looks huge, it looks huge when you're just, <clears throat> It looks huge when you're a level one person, but the secret to this life, the secret to winning this game of life, the secret to all of your dreams coming true is to build yourself into a level three, a level four, a level five, a level six problem so that you can swallow any type of perceived problem that comes up in your life. And you never, ever, ever think about quitting. You never, ever think about walking away because when you quit on yourself, oh my God, when you quit on yourself, you're leaving. You're leaving your destiny. You're leaving your mecca. Man, the easiest thing in the world to do is to quit. The easiest thing in the world is to go back and be a sheep herder. Look at look, look up the, the book, The Alchemist. If you've never read it, read that book, The Alchemist. And sometimes we got to read these things over and over again. Sometimes we got to pick up the phone when things we're going through calamity, we're going through chaos. <clears throat> we got to pick up the phone and we got to talk to somebody. We got to engage in the millionaire mindset. We got to have some people around us that can pour back into us because when you have just takers around you, when you have just people that take, 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 that's all they're going to do and it's going to weaken you and it's going to put you in a position where you believe that you got to quit. You fall into the position where you just do what 97% of all the people do. You no longer have the opportunity. You're cutting off your dreams. You're cutting off your desire. You're slitting your financial throat. It's that serious. It's got to be that serious to you. And when you walk away and when you quit, just know that every opportunity that you had, it was on its way. It was coming through the galaxies. It was coming from another dimension. You were taking it from the metaphysical. You were pulling it into the physical. But once you quit, Oh my God, once you quit all of the energy that it took for the universe to find you, to line up the people in your life, to bring the people around that can motivate you, to bring the people around that can just show you that I got your back and I'm there for you. And we, we kind of don't believe this because we're around the wrong people. And now you do the easiest thing in the world. Man, listen, don't tell me you're quitting. Tell me that you're going to fight because there's nothing else you can do. Tell me even when you're hungry, you're going to keep searching just like the birds in the night. You're just going to keep searching for that food because you know at the end of the day that it's there waiting for you. You just have to find it. You have to knock on that door and it'll be open unto you. You have to seek and you'll find it. You got to ask the right question and those answers will be delivered to you. Guys, opportunity is all around us. It is all around us. There's never, ever been a reason to quit. A lot of you religious guys, you, 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 whoever it is that you follow, whether it's Christ or Allah or who Buddha, whatever, you sit there and you tell these stories and you sit up in these churches and the first thing that you do when something heavy lays upon you is you quit. That's the first thing you think about is quitting. Why not thinking about, wow, okay, here's the problem. It just presented himself, itself. What do I do to overcome it? What do I do to overcome it? Because I don't want to go back to being a sheep herder. I don't want to go back to being that cow that just walks around mooing, fouling anybody. Why? What do I need to do to get back on course, to use my GPS of life so that I can get right to the goal that I want to be into? Listen, guys, I'm talking to my current lions right now. If you are a lion, you do not walk away. You don't, it doesn't matter how hungry you get. It doesn't matter how thirsty you get. You keep on searching. You keep on grinding. You never, ever stop. And if there's financial uh, problems in your life, you work them out. You don't walk away from them. You, you go through and you take because at the end of the day, life happens. 
at the end of the day, life is going to happen. No woe is me. No, oh my God, I'm the victim. No why is me. When you say why is me, there's something inside you that should say why not me? Why not me? Why can I only uh, look straight when things are going well? What happens? Like, what's your character? Like, how are you really built? Are you Jones tough? Or how 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 are you? Are you just gonna just collapse in the in the in, in the face of chaos? That's not what winners do. That's not what leaders do. We don't look for excuses. We don't look to have our ego lead us. We don't look for opportunities to quit. We look for every explanation. We look for every reason. We look for every sign of hope. We look for the respirator of life so that we can continue to breathe. Because at the end of the day, when I was going through mine, and I'm gonna share it with somebody today, at the end of the day, when I was going through mine, all I needed was, no matter what was happening, I was famished, I was lack of food, I was couldn't think straight. It's like, I just needed to get to the respirator. I just needed to get to the next, if it's the game of football, you understand football? I just needed to get to the next first down mark, to get a chance to do it all over again, all throughout my life. I just needed to get the first down. I didn't care if it was second and long. I didn't care if it was third and 36. I didn't care if it was fourth and 42. I just needed to see where the marker was to get the first down. Because when I get that first down, I got four more chances to get it right. And that's all I do is I keep seeking. And you get enough and you're never gonna understand it all. You you're never going to know how you're going to get to that to that first yard line if you don't try. If you quit, you're never going to recognize these opportunities. So please stop. Stop stopping yourself three feet from goal and then program it in your mind that this is what happens. I just lose. I'm a loser. No, you're not a loser. You're a quitter. It's impossible. There's no such thing as losing. There's no such thing as failing. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. We all have to deal with it. That's what's going to distinguish us from the next person. And that's what's going to give us the capability. That's what's going to give us the mindset. That's what's going to give us the resolve to know how to solve a problem. Guys, understand that problems were designed to make you better. Some of us don't get that. Problems are designed, even though they may hurt. Oh, my God, I can remember going through a divorce and leaving my my. My kids, and it's like, damn, it's like, why me? Why me? But why not me? See, when you really understand who you are in this world, and when you really understand that sometimes the universe, sometimes God will position you, will move you out of a place, but you don't give up on your dream. You don't give up on your dream. That's the last thing that you do. That is the last thing that you do. Listen, guys, three feet from gold, what happens when you walk away and you quit and everything that was coming, it's like a train coming. It's just a little bit late right now. You got there. You didn't know the time that it was supposed to be there. And you think that you waited and you waited and you waited and you walk away while the train is on its way. You walk away while delivery is on its way. You walk away when that person who can help change your life is right on its way. So stop, stop walking away because when you quit, when you quit and when you're three feet from gold, you're walking away from your legacy. You're walking away from everything that you ever wanted. And now you got to start all over. And just imagine this as a pendulum. That's what I want you to do. Imagine the pendulum on this big, huge, great grandfather clock of earth, of life. And, and it takes, do you know the energy that you have to muster up? to make this thing move? Do you know the energy that it takes? If you just start pushing, listen, it's not gonna move right from the beginning because energy at rest will stay in rest. Energy at motion will stay in motion until it stops. So now you gotta reverse engineer this. How do I get this thing back up and going? Because something has happened in my life and it seems like my life has just stopped. Everything I love is just gone. You have to understand that you must stay there. You are three feet from gold. You are three feet from gold gold. Most of you have fourth and six. One second on the clock. Who's your quarterback? Who are you leading? Who's depending on you to get you into the end zone when you're thinking about quitting, when you're thinking about what people are saying, when you're thinking about what might happen, when you're thinking and worrying about tomorrow and not being in the now, because that's where God operates in the now. That's where the universe operates in the now. So you can't look back over your shoulder because it takes you out of the now. You can't keep worrying about that because you're out of focus with the universe, with the universe now. And at the end of the day, if you think that it's hard to get to this level in this position, 
Imagine what happens when you stop. Imagine what happens when you quit. Imagine what happens when you're taking some time off. I've heard so many people, oh, I'm just going to, uh, whatever. The universe doesn't respect quitters. Everything that you say you want, prove it. Prove it by just staying in a little bit longer. Prove it. Prove that you really want it because it's only the test. And if you can't get through this test, chances are that the energy that you've exuded to get to this point is going to wipe you out. You don't even understand that you, when you're fourth and one, fourth and six, two, <clears throat> and it looks like it's over, don't be the person that says, I'm just going to kick the field goal or we're just going to punt it. Stop punting in life. We have to stop punting in life. That's why you're not making it to where you want to be, guys, because as soon as things get a little bit rough, you get up and you jump and you want to go to the next best thing that looks like fluff, looks like smoke screens, look like magic beans, and you haven't even earned your stripes. So you want to jump around, jump around, jump around. And I understand. I understand because it's easy to quit on you. It's the easiest thing in the world to quit on you. But I just want to let you know, when you're quitting on you, who else are you letting down? Who else are you letting down? Who was dependent upon you? Who was looking at you as the savior? Who was looking at you as this, as this rock star? Who was really looking at you to say, if my dad can do it, I can do it too. If my mama can do it, I can do it too. If my grandmother can do it, I can do it too. Who is vicariously living through you right now and you're on the verge of quitting? Who? Who's dependent on you? Because if you can't do it for yourself, you got to look back and see who's dependent on you. You got to see who needs to eat, too. It may be your family. It may be your community. It may be somebody on the outside that's just looking to see if you're going to get through yours so they know that they're going to have some hope to get through theirs, too. Come on, somebody. We got to understand this. And listen, at the end of the day, when you quit on yourself, to me, it's like smoking some crack. It's like shooting some drugs in your arm because you're killing your dream. Now watch this. Now watch this because we've been taught, those of you folks like me who come up in the church, the, we've been taught that this enemy comes to kill, comes to steal, and comes to destroy. Well, who, where is this enemy? Where is, is it you? Are you the enemy? Is it really the enemy within? Let's talk real now. Is it really the enemy within that hasn't taken the time, that doesn't have the perseverance, that's never really went through too much in their life? So now when things come up, they quit. Well, you just quit on your dream. So listen, this is what you just did. And it may be for you. It may be for your spouse. It may be for your kids. It may be for your aunt, uncle, niece, no matter the man across the street. It doesn't make a difference. You just killed somebody's dream, probably yours, number one. But you killed the person that was looking at you, their dream too, because they're like, damn, if daddy can't do it, I can't do it. If daddy sure can't do it and I look up to him, I damn sure can't do it. If mama can't do it, well, well how, how do I, how am I going to do it? So you've killed somebody's dreams. So it says the enemy comes to kill, steal. You've stolen everything that, I, that, I, that I've had. You've stolen all of my hopes also and destroyed. You just destroyed yourself and you destroyed me also. So my question is, Who's dependent upon you to succeed? Because this is not about you. If you're quitting because of something that's happened in your life, I want you to know that you're selfish. You are selfish because it's not about your first name. It's about your last name. Don't be that selfish person that quits on your dream. And what happens is you end up, if you know anything about the movie, one of my favorite movies, The Five Heartbeats, you end up looking like Eddie Kane Jr. in the end, talking, just saying this on nights like this. I wish raindrops would fall. Or you like the Temptations movie when the, 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 the person had the man that was the manager of the Temptations and they left, they quit, they walked away. And the Temptations, the people that would give, they're going to go do what they got to do anyway. So when you quit something, especially if you're a part of a group, when you quit something and walk away, the people that are there are now going to receive your blessing that you just walked away from because you didn't believe that you were strong enough to go through something. And man, listen, we'll never let money be the cause or the root or the victim of anything. 
anything. We're going to make it. This is what leaders do. They just dig in. I love when animosity comes by. I love when, when pro perceived problems come by because it makes me think because I know that I'm greater than any problem in this world. I know that I can figure it out. I know that whatever needs to be done can be negotiated. I know that I'm going to get to my Mecca. I know that I'm going to get to the finish line and nothing in this world is going to stop me. I'd rather die before I quit on myself. I'd rather die before I quit on my family. I have something to prove to me, even if it's taken a little bit longer than I thought, I'm still not going to quit because that train that's on its way, that midnight train to Georgia, yeah, it's coming through and it's waiting on you. And what are you going to do when it shows up and you're no longer at the stop? Guys, you got to get into a position. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to get into the position where you're going to take all of your chips on the table and you're going to push them all. And there's no turning back. You got to burn all the bridges. And you got to say that I'm betting it all on black. I'm betting it all on me. And no matter what happens, you got to have this mindset. I'm going to win it all or I'm going to lose it all. And the way that I'm built, there's no way in the world I'm going to lose it all. Because I know me. I'm a normal creator. I know that I join heirs and join heirs. I know that I can do anything that I want to do. I know that I am that I am that I am. And nothing's going to stop me. And my question to you is, will you bet it all on you? Will you bet it all on you? If you're not built for that, oh, that sucks. Oh, God, it sucks being you because <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm passionate about people that quit on themselves and that quit on their lives. And the thing, the very, see, this is the thing you never know what someone has in store for you. You never know what God has in store for you. And you pack up your bags and you walk away. It doesn't matter how hard things are. It doesn't matter how heavy the luggage is. Listen. Life lesson real quick. <clears throat> I remember when <clears throat> I was getting into the seminar business and I put so much energy, we were working on putting the course together, getting the, the, the CDs together, getting the audios together, the DVDs together, making sure that every single thing worked that was supposed to happen. And I can remember getting caught up in the scandal at the same time that probably would have killed the average person. And because I'd never been through something like that before, everything inside of me said to stick my head in the sand because there was no record of success that I was going to. There was no blueprint. There was no file cabinet of that success that I was looking to go to. But there was success of failures, but there was no success of a failure on this level because we have different levels. And when you are on the cusp of receiving your blessing, please know this. Please know that all hell will break loose in you. Please know that that is the time that you got to dig in. Please know that all hell will break loose because you've prayed for this, because you've said to the universe, I'm worthy. You said to God that I really, really want this no matter what, just give it to me. And I believe and I know that the hell breaking loose is the test to see if you really want what you say or if you're just one of those people that are hoping and wishing and looking for the fluff, the magic beans, and the smoke screens. But when it, the hell breaks loose, please know that is your time. It is your time. And if you walk away from it, we don't know when that time is going to come back because we got seasons, folks. And if you don't understand the seasons, and if you think that when your season comes in the, in the fall, if you think that you're going to get a do-over and plant those seeds in the winter, I'm telling you that the crop won't grow. The land's not the same. So we must take advantage now. We must do what needs to be done now. We must go from black sheep to black lion now. We must roar now. We must walk like a lion now. We must do the things that we need to do to attract the people. And I want you to know that no matter how dark it gets in your life, the sun is going to come back up. But you got to hold on. You've got to hold on with everything you got. You got to surround yourself with some people that don't judge you. You got to surround yourself with people that got your back. 
You have to surround yourself with people that you can pick up the phone and call at 3 a.m. in the morning because you're that, you're that close to killing yourself. You got to be around some people that can help you. And we got to let go of this pride. We got to let go of this ego because that's the thing that takes you out. Pride was the thing that took me out for so long. Ego was the thing that took me out. Oh, I didn't hear something. I heard something I didn't like. Oh, I'm so easy to get offended. Oh, what? Come on. Come on now. That's not a leader. That's not a true leader of the field. Got to have tough skin like a gator. You got to understand that whatever comes your way, it's because something bigger is waiting. Let, hey, guys, let me tell you, this is something I found out. Whenever a void came in my life in the form of hurt, in the form of pain, in the form of loss of loved ones, and I, and I don't mean just by death, I mean relationships, breaking up those things can take us out of our, of our, of our, of our path to glory, our path to Mecca, our path to heaven, but you've got to recognize the omens. You have to recognize that you are where you are, and you don't even know where you are. You don't even see the forest because all you see is trees. Well, I can't find the forest because there's nothing but trees around me. Well, listen up, guy. Listen up, young lady. You're in the forest. Why would you leave? Why would you walk away? Your gift, your prize, your treasure, physically, spiritually, monetarily, it's right there, right now. And I'm tired of seeing people quit. I'm tired of seeing people walk away on their dreams and then just say, oh, it wasn't meant to be. Oh, well, I guess God didn't have it. Or I'm just going to, no, 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 no. You're right there. You're ready. You're right now. Your time is right now. And just in closing this out, if we had, as human beings, we say that we're the most intelligent form of life on this earth, but sometimes I don't even agree with that. Because when God creates a 100 foot tall maple tree, it grows to be 100 feet tall. It was designed to do that. I'm gonna say that again. <clears throat> when God, when the creator of this universe said this will be a maple tree that will grow 100 feet tall, it doesn't grow six feet tall and get tired of living, get tired of trying, get tired of sucking up the water from the roots. It will grow to its potential. It will become 100 feet tall. So that's why I'm like, wow, if we understand and, and we understand the laws of nature and understand that the same way that that 100 foot tall oak tree will grow to be 100 feet tall and it will go through some things, it will go through some things. Why do you quit if we had the same components, if we had the mindset or the capabilities just like a 100 foot tall maple tree as human beings, as human beings who quit, as human beings who give up on life, as human beings that stop three feet from goal, six inches from the goal line. If we were that same maple tree, that same oak tree, that's supposed to see our source said that you're supposed to be this, but we don't believe it. So we only grow to six feet tall. And the only reason we're growing to six feet tall is because some things have happened. Maybe it didn't rain on time. Maybe you didn't get the fertilizer on the day that you thought you were gonna get the fertilizer. Or maybe something just came up that hurt you that has something that's involved with your ego. And now you're letting everything go behind you and you're forgetting about the people, the family that's looking for you. You're looking at the people that are dependent upon you. This is why I say, when you quit on yourself, you're not just quitting on yourself. You're quitting on family that's dependent on you. You're quitting on family that's just looking. Maybe they're going to come on board, but they're looking to see what you do. And what happens when you call them and you tell them that you quit, or they ask you what happened with your business, or they ask you what happened with your relationship, or they ask you what happened and you just quit. And they're like, well, man, I've been watching you for the last three months. I've been watching you for the last year. And I was just about to get in because you showed me that this is something that I could do also. You showed me that this is something that I could do. And I've been watching you. And when you quit, you took and you robbed and you killed and you steal and you destroyed. So it's not about the enemy outside. It's the enemy within. We're doing it to ourselves and we're blaming it on something else. And when you get that, and when you understand spirit, when you understand who you are, when you understand the God that's inside of you that has given you every single thing that you need, how do you quit on that? It's how, how do you quit on that? That's plain selfish. It's selfish because it's about you. That's your ego. Get it out the way. Kill the ego. Two more points and I'm out of here. <clears throat> Let's talk about the anatomy 
of a winner. Let's talk about the anatomy of a leader, a real black lion. Number one, we'll talk about these packs of prides of lions. Lions don't roam by themselves. So that means if something comes along that's bigger than it, it can tap back into itself. It can look to the right and it can look to the left and know that there's a pride behind it. That pride could be your mastermind group. That, my, that pride could be your mentor. That pride could be whoever it is that you look for in strength when things get a little bit scary. I'm not here to tell you that things are just gonna be all right. I'm here to let you know that things get a little bit scary. As an entrepreneur, as someone who's trying to go from here to there, as that little boy, Santiago, that's a sheep herder. Listen, you can always go back to being a sheep herder. Why quit on your dreams? The easiest thing in the world is to go back to what you were doing. The easiest thing in the world is to go back to life as usual. When you're designed, you when you're designed to shine, when you're designed to move forward, when you're designed to have have these obstacles in life that you think are built to take you out, but it's built to strengthen you. Somebody's got to catch this. The anatomy of a winner just has to win. The anatomy of a loser just has to lose. Like, who are you? Just make a decision. Just make a line in the sand. What side are you going to be on? Are you going to be a winner in life or are you going to be a loser in life? And I want to say this, that the only way that you can become a loser is if you quit. If you quit on anything. If you quit on your family. If you quit on your dreams. If you quit on hopes, if you quit on your talent, listen, it's, it's, it's time to stop talking about who has potential. What is potential? Potential is unfulfilled dreams, unfulfilled reality. We have to go from this person, we all know that person, who's just so full of potential. How about going from potential to understanding your purpose, to understanding what you're here for and aligning yourself up with your spirit, aligning yourself up with the ultimate source and infinite wisdom so that when things come up that you don't quit, that you don't think about quitting on your family, you don't think about quitting on your kids, you don't think about not only stealing and robbing and stealing your dreams, but dreams of the people that are looking at you and depending upon you to get to the other side. And when you quit, you kill all of that. So I ask you, where's the real enemy? Where's the real enemy if you're killing dreams? You're stealing people's dreams. You're destroying your dreams and other people. That's not fair and that's selfish. Who's depending upon you to win? Because at the end of the day, you got to need this like you need air to breathe. At the end of the day, listen, winners just know how to win. Losers are just really, really, really good at losing. You got to make a decision. I'm not going to quit on my dreams. I'm gonna jump off of this mountain where I see nothing around and on the way down, I'm gonna build an airplane. That's where you gotta get to in life. And as an entrepreneur, you gotta know your power and strength. As a child of God, you gotta know your power and your strength and there's no need. Whoever it is that you follow, whether it's Jesus, Allah, Buddha, whatever. What if these people who had great adversities upon them would quit right before right before they get to Mecca, right before what they were designed to do happened. What if they quit? What if your Jesus quit when he was supposed to carry out something, but he's like, nah, man, I can't do this. Uh, 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 my friends turned against me. Uh, 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 Judas, uh, that wasn't who he said he was. Uh, we're looking for all of these reasons to not go through with what God has for us and you turn into a quitter and you can never ever be a strong leader. You can never ever have the power that you're entitled to. You can never ever be heirs and join heirs because the person that you're heirs and join heirs and co-creators with, they're not quitters, they're winners. With that being said, somebody out there needed to hear this because you see the thoughts that come through my mind? I'm so in tune with my spiritual manufacturer. And I understand that there's only one universal mind. There's nothing else out there to me. It's an illusion. So because I'm tapped in and I meditate and I pray, I understand that the thoughts that come into my mind, they're to be implemented. Immediately, I'm not supposed to wait. The confirmation that you seek, the confirmation that they seek, 
is because they don't understand who they are. They don't understand their power. And now because you don't recognize or trust in yourself, because you truly don't know who God is, so you can't trust in yourself because to know God is to know yourself. To know yourself is to know God. So now when you don't know that and you're looking for third party confirmation from somebody else to tell you what God has in store for you, never gonna happen, never gonna get it, right? But when you get to that point and you're looking for all of these things, even in your Bible, it says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So you don't know to turn left. You don't know to turn right. You put the address in the GPS and you're going around in circles. And before you know it, you're like a ship in a harbor with no rudder. And you're just going around and around and around. And that could be the rat race of life. And that could be the finances. And that can be the relationship. And that could be all of these things that you think are bad, but they're designed to get you back on course. These little whispers, these are whispers whispers from the universe. These are whispers from your creator. These are whispers from God. And we take it as something else that it's not even intended to be, but it's to get you back on track. So don't quit on your dreams. Don't quit on your dreams. If you're going to jump off of that mountain, right, just build a plane on the way. And guess what? When you're in tune with who you're supposed to be and you know who your creator is, you will always get the answers as you're going through it. So many of us won't even step out. We won't step out on the things that our creator has told us to do because we don't know who we are. See, this is why we need to know who we are. We need to know what our power is because now you know that the confirmation, all the confirmation that you need has already been, it's the confirmation is the thought. When you truly understand the universal laws, you know that the confirmation for everything that you've ever wanted to do, it's the thought. But if you're harping on two different things, the negative side of things, the positive side of things, the negative side of the atom, the positive side of the atom, and when you let yourself focus and go over to the right, what it does is it causes chaos. So now you're living in confusion and chaos, and you're comfortable in your chaos. So now you don't know which voice to listen to. Because once again, that double-minded man or woman is unstable in all their ways. So with that being said, leaders, black lions, don't quit on your dreams because you're this close. You're three inches from it, three inches from gold. And if you quit, who else's dreams did you dash because they were vicariously living through you and they were watching you because they saw the God in you. They saw the God in you and they also saw you quit. So with that being said, never ever quit. You got to need this like you need air to breathe. And at the end of the day, Winners figure it out. They don't stop. They don't take time off. You keep moving forward. Point blank, end of story. With that being said, my mouth is dry. I've been talking for a while. And for that reason, I'm out. I know this is a blessing for you. Thank you. Share this with your friends.